I think I'm dating the man that got me pregnant on a one night stand. I'm a single mother to a beautiful little girl from a one night stand about four and a half years ago. Just finished college and had just moved and wasn't looking for anything serious. It also happened just before I left my two month long post college vacation. I have been dating this man for four months. He has met my daughter once. They get along extremely well, but I don't let them overlap too much. I don't want to expose her to passing in flings, and though he has mentioned wanting to continue this, we aren't quite serious yet. Prior to last week, he's been coming back to my place because I had a bad experience going back to another man's place a year ago. So I went back to his place for the first time. It's the same freaking building as that man. I didn't really recognize it until we pulled into the parking garage and went up the elevator, but I know it is. But I recognized the hallways instantly. It also had a very recognizable condo smell. I don't know why I remember that, but I feel like they use the clean solutions that spas use. It smells like eucalyptus and apartment musk. The condo itself is similar, but it's been four years, and I honestly don't remember anything but his room, and that he had a red couch and the layout, which I'm assuming is similar for most of the condos. He doesn't have the couch, but the layout's the same, and I'm pretty sure it has the same view from its main window. And before people come at me for not hunting him down, etc., when we slept together, I had just moved to the city after my masters. I would have never found his condo myself because I bust back. Also, we had been obviously drinking. It's been a week, but I genuinely am thinking it's him now because though they were busy, we met both times at two very similar events. Four years ago, the man had shoulder length wavy dark hair and a thick beard when we slept together. He does have a similar skin tone, kind of Mediterranean. The man I am dating has short cropped dark hair, light stubble and glasses. He also has an Italian background. They have the same name. It's a very basic American name, so I never connected it together. Also, to make it worse, I likely look very different too. I used to be very thin and suffered from an eating disorder that my pregnancy really helped me to overcome. I've gained 30 pounds that I really needed. I also had short hair that I straightened and I'm half black and admittedly look very different now with my longer curly hair. I have been dwelling on this for the entire week. I don't know what I'm asking, but I don't know if I also need legal advice or if I should cut contact because even if it isn't him, I don't think I'll be able to get over this weird feeling that it is. Is there a way to bring this up? Should I message him and let him have the option to ghost me? I'm scared he'll think I'm crazy if I bring this up or that I planned it or something weird like that. How do I approach this or should it not be approached at all? It's so effing mental, I don't know what to do. Sorry if absolutely none of this makes any sense. And also to be clear, I am stable time-wise and money-wise. I do not need this man in my life. My daughter has two amazing father figures in her uncle who visits every other day and absolutely loves their roles in her life and would probably steal her if they could. And now in the comments, talk to him. You know, I keep getting the weirdest feeling that we met each other years ago. Did you used to have a thick beard and shoulder length hair? If the answer is no, then he's not the same guy. Brush it off to him as an odd coincidence and move on. If the answer is yes, then probe further. And how long have you lived in your apartment? Under five or six years? Not the guy, over five or six years. Probe further by asking if he had a red couch back then. If the answer is yes, then you need to ask him if he remembers a girl who looked like you did back then and take it from there. If either of you can get out old photos of yourselves, then that would be even better. I know it seems like a long-winded way to do it, but it would be a good idea to be more certain about your suspicion before dropping a maybe baby daddy bombshell on him because life is full of weird coincidences that don't actually mean anything in the end and memories can play tricks on us. Wait a minute, you don't remember what he looked like other than Mediterranean blah blah blah. Does he remember you? You have to clear this up. The only thing crazier than just exploring it is leaving it unanswered. And OP says, It was five years ago, and at this point, the more I try to remember exactly what he looked like, the less I do. It might sound bad, but I didn't have any intention of seeing him again at the time. I just don't really remember, plus, we had been drinking. 
and yes, but I seriously don't know how to broach this, and I don't know if he remembers me. I'm assuming not. And now back up to the edits. It's him. He had the red couch I remembered, so if anyone has any suggestions about how to tell a man this, that would be great. Thanks. Edit 2, I send him this post. I didn't know how else to do it. He saw it half an hour ago and has yet to respond, so I'm going to bed. Thumbs up. Edit 3, I woke up to a lot more comments than I was expecting, and I just dropped my daughter at her uncle's, so I'll respond to what I can now. I'm getting some flack for telling him this way, but until you are in an absolutely insane position like this, you don't know how impossible it is to broach a topic like this. I'm not a shy person, but this was enough to almost make me contemplate ghosting him, even though I do like him and I know it's wrong. We've been talking for six months and dating for four. He asked about monogamy two weeks ago and I agreed. With this post, I sent him a picture of me from five years ago and told him the event and when and where, and any other small details I could remember, and the sonogram with the date that I have on my fridge. He messaged at 4am to say, yes, I was there, I remember you, and I've seen the text bubbles popping up and disappearing all morning. I don't have any other updates, and I'm not sure I will. I clearly only looked for potential partners who would be okay with a woman with a kid in the picture. My daughter is the world to me, but I'm not sure how this can not be an incredible shock. I'm going to give him time and contact my family's lawyer with the crap storm I know I've just caused. I do want to have a laugh though, at the people who think it's impossible of me to have forgotten what a one night stand looked like. It was five years ago. We have both clearly changed a lot and we had been drinking. There are people I don't recognize from uni who sat next to me in class for a year. Thanks for the help earlier. I'll probably have to delete this, but this has really helped me calm down. I used to journal a lot before I had my daughter. And now on to the update. I doubt this will be the update everyone was hoping for, but he bounced, to put it politely. Won't answer my calls or messages, though I don't think he actually blocked me. We talked the first few days, exchanged pictures, etc. It's definitely him. He knows it is. Then about a week and a bit ago, nothing. I guess I could go by his place, but I don't particularly care to, and I doubt he would appreciate it. If this is his choice, he can stick with it. I didn't get a choice when this happened, even though it's the happiest accident of my life, but I didn't have the option either. I own a business and have been debating the opportunity to move to invest in a small estate Europe for a few years, and I have been putting off the decision. He was aware of this while we were dating. My daughter's uncles are even planning on moving with us for the opportunity since they both have dual citizenships like us. So I'm sorry if this is a disappointment for lots of you, I do wish him the best, but I think big insane moments like this are eye-opening. I also think that my daughter would benefit from experiencing Europe. If he gets back in contact, I would be willing to pay for his flights and housing etc for him to get to know her, but I don't think that will be the case. Hope you're all well, and this didn't add too much of a downer to your days. But I got a lot of requests to update. And now in the comments, all the best to you and your child. Take care. Thank you. He might have temporary cold feet or shock, and if things go well, he gets back to his senses in a week or two and fixes up his act. You just focus on doing what's best for your child, and don't let anyone take advantage of you or the child. The romantic in me hopes that he just has cold feet because he's surprised, but I'm glad that OP not only communicated her goals to him, but isn't letting him stop her even with this new major development. I hope he comes around and at least gives OP some answers. Shoot for the moon, OP, and give both you and your daughter the life that you both want and deserve. You've done it without him so far, you can do it without him further. If he wants to join, I hope it works out. At minimum, it is good to know who the father is for potential health reasons down the road. No need to keep in touch, but family health history could come in handy if necessary, and he would at least provide that in the future. Willing to date a single mom, but not step up for his own child. You dodged a bullet, OP. He's probably still processing. 
This is kind of a big deal. He could tell her that and say he needs time to process instead of just ghosting. Yeah, no grown man just ghosts a woman for a week after finding out that he has a child with her. It seems like communication and figuring out where to go would be the adult thing to do. Otherwise, I don't have a ton of respect for his response or lack thereof. I send you all the best of vibes and energy in raising your child. I followed your story and I hope you find luck in somebody else. And OP says, ha, huh, I'm content single, always have been, but yeah, maybe someday. And thank you, I think she'll be happy since her uncles will come too. Don't pay for his flights, it's the least he can do if he changes his mind. She's not doing it for him, it's for her child. If having him pay for the flight is enough to deter him from getting to know his child, it's probably best he's not in their lives. I feel like the way OP went about telling him about the whole situation was not ideal. This is something that should have been discussed in person as it was pointed out. Then again, the circumstances are just insane. It's disappointing that he has seemingly ghosted her. I kind of get the feeling OP didn't want him involved, and he didn't want to be involved, and they both have this feeling of, welp, it is what it is, and it's resolved now. I honestly just feel bad for the daughter. At some point, this will be so confusing to find out for her. This was only two weeks ago. It takes me longer to text back sometimes, and that's to people I don't have a surprise baby with. I really want him to still just be in shock. Maybe he's contacting his own lawyer to get a DNA test. Maybe wondering if she knew, or feeling weird about the internet getting the memo before him. Maybe trying to find a therapist to check in with. Ugh. I just wanted this one to play out differently, and my brain is just not ready to write him off because he didn't instantly become dad of the year after this incredibly weird serendipitous event. Our next post is titled, Florida. Hospital security guard tried to deny me access because I didn't smile. Background. I'm a 20-something female. My older sister is a physician at a hospital. She's hosting Thanksgiving at her home this year, so my other siblings and I have flown in to stay with her. I had just gotten my older brother from the airport, and we went to the hospital to pick up our sister after her shift. When we got to the hospital, there's a small security guard podium where the security guard hands out visitor stickers. My brother and I went up to get our stickers, and when the guard handed mine to me, he said, why aren't you smiling? I was exhausted because it had been a long day, and I told him that I was tired and just wanted to get my sister so that we could all go home and relax. He kind of smirked and scoffed, and then my brother and I walked away. We were all the way across the lobby when the security guard called after my brother with, Sir! Sir! You need to come back here! We both turned around and started walking back towards the guard, but he stopped me and told me to stay where I was. So I did. My brother went up to him and the guard told him that if I didn't smile the next time he saw me and if I wasn't in a better mood, then he had the right to deny me access into the hospital. To note, I was in no way rude to anyone, just tired and not very talkative. My brother's flight was delayed three hours and I just spent most of the afternoon sitting in baggage claim. My brother asked why the guard was talking to him and not to me and the guard's response was, because you need to control her. You need to make certain that she behaves herself. At that point, my brother walked away and didn't want to engage any further. We got my sister a few minutes later and went home. One of my friends told me that the guard exercised tone policing along with a great display of misogyny. But aside from that, can a security guard reasonably deny me access because he doesn't like that I'm not cheerfully smiling? I would think that access can only be denied for legitimate threats, not a 20-something woman who is tired and not smiling. What is the legal basis here? And now in the comments, did you make any complaints to the hospital yet? And OP replies, my sister gave me the information to contact HR, but I honestly don't know what to say. I don't really understand the situation because it's honestly so bizarre. I want to make certain that when I write to the hospital, I'm informed about what I'm writing about. Is this a misuse of the security guard's position? Is it discrimination? Is it a legal violation? He also said that he didn't like the way that I took the visitor's sticker from him, but my brother has confirmed that I took it from him the same way that everyone else did. He handed it to me and I took it. Pretty basic. Just to hammer the point home, simply tell hospital HR what you told us here. 
It's creepy. It doesn't have to be anything more than that for the hospital to do something about it. A person's behavior and demeanor can legally be used as criteria for admittance, and a security guard is generally allowed to act as the property owner's slash manager's agent in deciding what constitutes a possible threat to the premises and other individuals present there. So yes, it is legal, but that does not make it okay. Contact his employer if you have a problem with his work behavior. Also, how he insisted on only speaking to my brother about my demeanor. It stripped me of my voice slash agency and was incredibly dehumanizing. Just because it is legal does not mean that the hospital knows about his behavior and would approve. You could report him to a supervisor. You should report him. And now on to the update. First of all, thank you so much to everyone who responded to my first post and gave me the courage to approach HR. My sister, the hospital physician, actually spoke to HR first. She went to them this morning, as she was off yesterday, and then spoke to the head of the security team. I was asked to come into the hospital this morning to meet with hospital administration. My brother went in with me and corroborated my story. HR was appalled. They said that they'd heard rumors about this specific security guard, but no one had ever escalated their complaints to administration. They brought in two more security guards who have worked with him to verify some of the rumors they've heard. Apparently the guard in question has been caught lingering in front of the women's restrooms on his breaks, and he denied a doctor's wife entrance because she didn't know the room number for the cafeteria where she was meeting her husband for lunch. The final thing HR said to me was, today will be the last day you will see him. We do not support this type of behavior at our institution, and he will not continue with us. In the end, the HR director told me that it is so important to report inappropriate behavior. She said that so many times people will gossip amongst themselves about situations, but no one will actually take it up with administration, which subsequently makes HR's job more difficult to complete because then they don't know about happenings within the organization. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now in the comments, telling her brother that she needs to smile? Disallowing entry to a woman because they don't know the room number for the cafeteria. Creepy misogyny aside, it's absolutely incredible how little power it takes for some people to openly act like authoritarian weirdos. Even if it wasn't disgustingly misogynistic, I can think of a lot of valid reasons why someone might not want to smile at a hospital. Well, sure, there's layers here, like a rotting onion. That was my first thought. Even if I was just having a normal bad day and meeting someone for lunch, I would lie and say, F you, my mom is in there dying of cancer, I am not smiling. Seriously, rule number one of the hospital is mind your own damn business. Tangential, but my dad had to have surgery once, and he was already in the ICU. He wasn't stable enough to move, so they locked the ICU doors and did the surgery right there. We went and got food and came back to this lady yelling and banging on the doors because those assholes wouldn't let her in to give her husband lunch. My brother stared at her until she got quiet and then told her, I'm so sorry that the life-saving surgery they are performing on my father is inconveniencing you. And she left. Even if tone policing was okay, which it's not, does the guy not realize he works in a hospital? They aren't always going to be a happy place. It's a double-edged sword where good companies slash HR can't get people to report complaints because of the bad companies slash HR where it's used against the person slash employee. I'm glad this was a good company in this case, but that's why it's hard. Victim blaming or retaliation are real concerns when reporting the issues. This is why unions are so important. You have an organization of workers to give you exactly that feedback. I recently got an email that made me think that I was in trouble at work. Texted union rep, told me the standard protocol, if they did XYZ that I was fine, but if they did ABC, they were going overboard and we needed to fight it, etc. Or I forget what they're called, external business partners? I don't know, but it's what responsible organizations are increasingly doing. They are intentionally building firewalls and multiple sources for reporting so that it's harder for it to get suppressed. Don't quote me, but I think this is reflective of a general shift towards flatter organizational structures versus the more traditional top-down hierarchy. 
All right, and that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it down below, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.